joining us now is business consultant Vivian Annie. Good morning. Good morning. Thank morning, you for Vivian. coming. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. You have the Christmas <laughs> colors already. Yes, <laughs> she's in the mood already. I'm in the mood. <laughs> in the mood. All right. Nigerians have been advised to tighten their belts because in 2020, with this finance bill, there's a whole lot they have to expect. I wonder how this comes to you. Um, the most worrisome part of that bill is the VAT increase, and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there, there's some parts of the bill, I must say, that were quite um, positive, that had a positive spin to it. The part that had to do with the company in, you know, income tax, the mm. exemption of companies that do less than 25 million. However, that VAT increase, because if you look at it from 5% to 7.5%, is a 50% increase. It doesn't look that way until <laughs> you actually look at it well, because you just say it's small. Oh, 5% to 7.5, what's the biggie? But look at it in percentage terms, it's a lot. And if you find the government has said that companies that have less than 25 million naira turnover mm -hmm. in a year uh, don't have to bear the burden of output VAT. It's important for us to understand this well. VAT has two sides, an impute VAT and an output VAT. Impute VAT is the one that you pay your suppliers, the one that your suppliers charge you and then you pay. So meaning whatever you're paying for in Nigeria and most goods, it's um, the, 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 the bill of, for the payment itself plus 5%. Now it now becomes plus 7.5%, which is a 50% increase. The government says that the companies that have turnovers of less than 25 million do, do not have to render returns for the output one. The output one is the one that you charge your customers, you know, the one that when you sell goods, you also yeah. in turn charge mm -hmm. your customers. If you, fine, so it looks good on the face of it. However, if you look deeper, if you're saying to a company, I've increased the one you're paying your suppliers by 50%, right? But don't charge your own customers. You've still increased my cost yeah. of, <laughs> my yeah. cost of, exactly. you know, operations. Yeah. By, by, by With, without taking it back from the end point. <laughs> without mm. taking it back from the end point. So, um, and also look at the fact that if you, if you talk to a lot of small businesses, you'd be shocked at the amount of turnover even when they're trading with very little money, and I'll tell you why. Trading, a lot of businesses in Nigeria are trading businesses, especially the micro and SMEs. If you're trading with just one million naira, right? Your, 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 mm. your basic capital is one million naira that you used to buy stock and then sell. If you take, if you have a short, what we call a cash conversion cycle, meaning from the time you buy the goods to the time you sell them and get your money. If it's one week, there are 52 weeks in a year. Meaning 1 million times 50, 52, that mm -hmm. is 52 million. So you're, going to, you're not going to even get exempted from output tax. So you're going to be paying that tax, the impute tax to your suppliers mm. at 50% extra. You're still going to be adding another 7.5% to your, mm. your goods. All right. Let's, 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 fr from your perspective, looking at it just beyond the economics of it, what do you think is behind the idea of... Uh, increasing VAT at this time. A lot of people say, well, if you put it side by side by the minimum wage that is being pushed by NLC and, all, and Nigerians, it's a way of getting it from the, from the back door. Okay, no, 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 no. The minimum wage is supposed to be for certain categories of companies. Mm. Um, I think the law says once you're hiring more than 50 people who are working full time and blah, 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 you must implement the minimum wage. Um, so really, the government, if government is taking more money out of the hands of Nigerians, they're using it to fund their own staff, that's the civil servants, right? Uh, and and uh, oh, the private sector too would pay, but not from government pockets. Mm -hmm. The private sector has to find a way to fund mm -hmm. it. H how, does, how does paying 30,000 naira minimum wage and then offsetting it with VAT increases, which was going to have that multiplier effect on all of us, how does that make life better in the end? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's something we have to ponder and ask yeah. ourselves. Yes. But then there's this issue that uh, some have said that we are overlooking in terms of the exemptions. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that is why the, it, it, that is something that has been pushed, that has been pushed over the years, mm -hmm. which was reflected I in this finance bill. And so that uh, those uh, in the middle class mm -hmm. are the ones that will be paying the tax. And so and not the people below, you know, the, or the, the middle class. So these issues are said to be being um, avoided or not even looked at, which is uh, one of the benefits, according to some. Nobody is going to be exempted from the spillover effect of this taxes, mm. especially the VAT. Yes, especially the VAT. I'm saying especially because when you look at the one that dividends on, on petroleum, um, you know, companies, yes, we could say, fine, it doesn't concern us because really petroleum company shareholders are big people. Mm. So it's like an upper level. But think about this VAT thing well. 
you're going to pay higher prices because the cost of production, the cost of, you know, don't forget that part of the cost of production is also the cost of goods sold, okay. meaning things you buy from your suppliers. Mm -hmm. Now, that is for tangible products. You also look at the cost of production to do with sales and admin expenses, to do with data that you're buying, to do with telephone charges, and all these Everything. services, the services and goods, a lot of them are subject to VAT. And a 50% increase in VAT, there's no way any one of us is going to you know, exempted. not exempted, exempted mm -hmm. in, including the very poor people themselves. You could say that MSMEs, micro and small, small medium, medium enterprises, enterprises are exempted. exempted. So on the face of it, all oh, companies below 25 million, oh, poor people, it won't touch you. But that's not true. For as long as they're paying an impute tax, which is the tax that they pay to their suppliers. And don't forget that typically, a lot of the suppliers are much bigger than the companies mm -hmm. that they're supplying to. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be end up having to um, abide by the 50% increase on that. Ah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and the government is planning to take 100 million people out, out of, of poverty. poverty in the next uh, 10 <laughs> years. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, let's see how it plays out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank, you, <laughs> Thank so you so much for coming on the program. <laughs> All right. Joining us now is business consultant Vivian Ani. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. If you, see, if you sit down here with your economic crystal balls... I wonder what you see in 2020. What kind of 2020 are you envisaging from the uh, uh, finance bill that if it's going to be, if it becomes law eventually? A tough one, a tough one. Tough the, one. Yes, tough. The finance bill is a mixed bag. There are some good things and there, there are also some things that um, look good on the face of it. But when you probe a lot deeper, mm. you see the bigger picture. But good, bad, which, which, is, which way is more here exactly? Higher prices. Whoa. Higher prices, higher inflation, um, higher unemployment, quite a number of layoffs resulting from higher cost of production, which might not be able to be passed on successfully to consumers because consumers are already tired. There's only so much you can you know, absorb. So when a business, you look at your bottom line, you're paying a lot more for mm. production than you were paying before. The easiest thing to let go of is stuff. Do you think enough work, groundwork was done in terms of impact analysis when you look at this bill? Well, if you, if you according to w when I read the statement about how the bill came about, it was supposed to be based on suggestions by the Pe PEBEC, that's the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, and the uh, Tax uh, Policy Implementation Committee. These were based on their suggestions. So I don't know if it was subjected to a wider stakeout um, stakeholders outreach. I'm not quite sure because I'm, I'm trying, I was trying to dig, to, to dig to see how these suggestions, whether was it just the committee and the council that sat and then came up with suggestions to government. You know, at times, some of these policies are very well intentioned, but again, the, the collateral damage at times cannot be foreseen until the things actually kick in and when it's subjected to a larger discourse. Yeah. So I wish it was subjected to a much larger uh, stakeholder engagement process because at times what you can't see you know, other people will bring it up and say, have you considered this and that? And that way, the bill would have come out in a much, much better form than some of the fears we have now. Mm. All right. Now, so some arguments say that uh, when VAT is increased, more money is being generated or more revenue is generated for government and government is able to carry out some of the infrastructural and developmental uh, uh, projects for the people. Mm. I, I always say this. The government is not a very efficient allocator of resources. It's not just in Nigeria. Is it our government or government Gen generally? All over the world. Okay. All of, even, even in the US, you know, there's always the debate that um, a certain party is seen as tax and spend. Mm -hmm. They come in, they increase taxes, mm -hmm. oh, taxes on the wealthy. And then what the American government um, public is asking, what do you do with these taxes? We don't see the effect. Mm -hmm. So in Nigeria, the problem is government is just not an efficient allocator of resources. So even with higher taxes, all over the world, nobody trusts the government is going to do any better even with higher taxes. But there's this issue of you know, harmonizing or if this is exposing Nigerians to more taxes with this bill? Oh, it is. It's a revenue. <laughs> the government has made no pretense about it. They even if you see the letter handing it over to the Assembly for debate, it's a revenue generation bill to fund the 2020. So meaning net effect is higher taxes? More taxes. More taxes. All right. Walk us through an ideal situation. Uh, what what? should be or can be considered in an ideal situation for VAT to be increased? If, if it has to be, uh, not necessarily considering this circumstance now, but in an ideal situation. Let me use what the doctors do. Okay. Doctors have exempted certain people from giving blood mm -hmm. for the simple reason that the underlying factors that make them not have surplus blood to give mm -hmm. certain people. You don't see a man who's really ill, all right, and tell him, we're going to take blood from you. Now, what you're doing is the same. Your Nigerian economy, I'm sorry to say, is just not as 
healthy as we all hoping it would be. And it doesn't now, have enough blood. It doesn't have enough blood. <laughs> <laughs> and with this, are you confident that this would inject more blood? See, you know, you know, I wish government, you know, looking at the sixth state of the Nigerian economy, we move more towards project finance, meaning identify every year certain projects on the budget and do independent funding arrangements for those budgets. For, sorry, for those projects. Independent, for, meaning, you, you know now, what, what basically government does is that it takes all this money, you know, and then decides where they want to allocate, where, where they want to allocate it to. However, if you identify maybe every year we want to do five projects, and this is how we want to fund on a standalone basis those five projects, it works out to a much better arrangement yeah. than what's going on now. And, get, and getting the private sector involved. Precisely. Mm. Mm. And they spend their capital. Precisely. And then there's more blood Precisely. in the, <laughs> in the, in the, the economy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Vivian, thank you so much thank for your you. time. Thank you, always my program. pleasure. Thank you.